Hello, and thanks for tuning in for another session of Back Porch Catechetics with Dr. Humphreys. In today's short video, I would like to discuss the liturgy, and in particular, the liturgy of the hours. Many of you are familiar with a very famous quote from the Second Vatican Council in its text, Sacrosanctum Concilium. The Church earnestly desires that all the faithful be led to that full, conscious, and active participation in liturgical celebrations called for by the very nature of the liturgy. Liturgy as a term comes from an ancient Greek word which meant a kind of public service or offering, even a duty. The duty of the church, the public offering that we have in our dignity as baptized Christians, is to offer prayer on behalf of the world and on behalf of ourselves. Now, Christian liturgy is not simply where two or three are gathered, there am I in your midst. But Christian liturgy takes its root from the very worship that the Son offers, the pattern that we see in the incarnation, in the death and resurrection of our Lord. This pattern finds its ultimate source and summit in the Eucharist, the Mass for Catholics. But the liturgy of the Eucharist is not our only public act of worship. We're familiar with the Liturgy of the Word, which is often abutted right next to the Liturgy of the Eucharist. There are other liturgies in the Church. In particular, the Liturgy of the Hours is an ancient practice. Its roots are within Judaism and Christian monasticism. In many of the Church's grand liturgies, we require priests and deacons and servers, and lectors, and the people gathered together to proclaim their parts. Any baptized Catholic can preside over the Liturgy of the Hours. And in this way, it is particularly relevant to families and to lay men and women. The Catechism of the Catholic Church has a short section with a few paragraphs specifically addressing the Liturgy of the Hours. The mystery of Christ transforms the time of each day through the celebration of the Liturgy of the Hours. This is truly the voice of the Church, the Bride herself, addressed to the Bridegroom. In it, all the Christian faithful may cry out to God in the words of Scripture, and may listen to God respond. The Liturgy of the Hours is not simply the prayer of one priest or of the monks. It's a prayer like all liturgy of the whole Church, and a prayer which is particularly apt for individuals and families and small groups. To pray not simply with those face to face with themselves, but to pray with the whole church, the whole church scattered throughout the world who reads the same prayers on the same day, the whole church scattered throughout time, the saints of old who have said these same hours, and the church scattered through eternity, the angels and the saints who pray liturgy with us. The liturgy of the hours is naturally connected to the liturgy of the word and the Liturgy of the Eucharist. While it can be prayed apart from it, it exists to channel our prayers, to drive them into Eucharistic celebration, and then to withdraw from that Eucharist as its source, new inspiration and new patterns of prayer. When we pray the Liturgy of the Hours, we are in essence extending our preparation for an upcoming Mass and continuing to digest the Eucharist the word which we have received. Because of the special character of the liturgy, when we, even as baptized individuals, take up the breviary and pray the Liturgy of the Hours, we pray with the Church and through the Church and for the Church. Liturgy has a character which is different even from private devotions that we might share together with each other. Liturgy allows us to participate genuinely in the priesthood of Christ 
which he has left to the church to offer appropriate sacrifice, to join ourselves in that worship which extends beyond time and reaches into heaven. Many private devotions spring from the liturgy of the hours and themselves return to them. It is said that the rosary is built around 150 Hail Marys in order to shorten the 150 psalms and allow us to continue to meditate on the life of Christ without having to carry large books. The Liturgy of the Hours, as attuned especially to time, is also attuned to the Church's liturgical calendar. All of the saints are given feast days. The liturgical seasons of Advent and Christmas and Ordinary Time, Lent and Easter, all of these have a particular character, and the Liturgy of the Hours savors that character and allows us to reflect upon it daily or even hourly. Because liturgy is particularly a ministry through Christ's priesthood and a part of our baptismal dignity, whenever we pray the Liturgy of the Hours, we are united to Christ, Christ the priest. We pray with him, he prays in us. We pray with the church and for the church. This means that praying the Liturgy of the Hours is a special kind of prayer. Perhaps the single greatest organizer of the Liturgy of the Hours as we pray it today is St. Benedict of Nursia. St. Benedict, the founder of Benedictine monasticism, called the Liturgy of the Hours the work of God, the work of the monks. For St. Benedict, the Liturgy of the Hours, the work of God, is so important that it can never be set aside. It must permeate the entire day, the entire life of the monk. For this reason, he's careful to note that those who cannot, for some reason, return to pray with the community should stop what they are doing and mark time with the Liturgy of the Hours, even on their own, that they might join with the community in that mystical language of liturgy. Those of us who find ourselves working too far from the church, perhaps when our abbot or our bishop has indicated that we are not free to return to the church building, do well to heed St. Benedict's words and remember that we should stop, we should be reverent to God, and we too should pick up our part of the liturgy and continue to pray. <laughs>